For more on the deal and how it's breaking down, we've got Paul Sweeney of Bloomberg Intelligence and Bloomberg's own Alex Sherman, who broke this deal early on. This has been really a two-year saga, and here we are. But it's not a done deal. It's not a done deal. They're going to have to make the case to regulators now, and that's what uh, we expect Tom Rutledge. He already started talking about it. We heard a brief soundbite from him just a little while ago. That's going to be the case that he's going to need to make over the coming months. Why there is a public benefit to this deal where there wasn't one when Comcast tried to buy time. And what's the argument? Well, I think the argument that they're going to try to make in terms of what's the public uh, benefit for the FCC is that, listen, we are in a new business here. The pay TV business is undergoing tremendous amount of competition right now from the Hulus and the Netflix of the world and the CBSs and the HBOs, everybody going direct to the consumer over the Internet. That really is a threat to the core pay TV business. The response from the industry is they have to continue to invest in their programming. They have to continue to invest in the technology, their broadband plant. They have to continue continue to make these upgrades. So I think they're going to try to argue that, listen, we need to get bigger, we need to get scale uh, to com compete in this new world. So we'll see if that you know, works better than what Comcast And for what it's worth, they're taking questions about this very issue on the conference call, and Charter says, A, they anticipate a faster regulatory review than Comcast under when Comcast's really dragged on, and B, they're going to have less than 30 percent of the high-speed broadband market, which was for the FCC. An issue when it, it came to Comcast yeah. and, and Time we Warner know Cable. that FCC Chairman Tom Wheeler has already spoken to the CEO of Charter and the CEO of Time Warner Cable, Rob Marcus, and basically indicated to them just because we rejected the Comcast deal doesn't mean we're going to reject all cable deals. That's a pretty strong sign, I think, that he's open to a deal. If here. they didn't have some sort, I'm not saying a wink, wink, nod, nod, but some sort of legitimate signal that yes we're possibly open for business after seeing what just happened they would not enter into this and, and to to cement that point there's a two billion dollar break fee associated with this deal one more time a two billion dollar breakup okay fee. so for, so for those who don't understand fee. exactly what that means yep. just walk us through because this means always blows my mind if the deal falls apart charter pays time Warner cable two billion dollars how, like, how does that even happen why what is the rationale behind that it, regulatory for the most part it's amazing now, in this case, right. there might be another bid. Right. bid. There right. might be another bid from Altice, theoretically, this other company that jumped into the cable world in the United States two weeks ago, ten days ago. But two billion dollars, doesn't that seem a little Austin Powers to you? It's a massive number. In the context of a $75 billion total mm -hmm. enterprise value, not that big a deal, but I think it just goes to show like there wasn't a breakup deal, uh, a breakup fee in a Comcast deal because the risks were just so right. enormous here. here. But but here Charter is highly motivated to get this deal get, done. Get, get this deal done and it's, I think they're going to uh, clearly get the deal done. They they don't own any programming. They're much smaller than Comcast. So I mean I think this deal probably gets done. There's, there are several fascinating aspects to this deal but one that really caught my eye this morning and one that from what I understand was not expected is the participation of hedge funds as financiers. Three hedge funds, Jenna run by Barry Rosenstein, a Sorban run by Eric Weinstein, it's a company I don't know that much about, um, and Philippe, Philippe Lafont of Coatu are lining up with Malone, right, buying shares of Liberty yeah. Broadband. Liberty Broadband, of course, then helping to fund charters we acquisition of Time Warner Cable this. and Brian never see this. Why now? These guys just have so much money? I think so. I think part of the deal is there's, a, there's been a lot of private equity out there uh, chasing deals, and the private equity world loves cable. They love cable because it's high uh, f uh, free cash flow, very predictable f free free cash flow. The question is, why would Malone let new equity come into this deal? But we also, Eric, from Philippe Lafont's standpoint, we knew there was going to be a shift in the way he was investing. We heard that from him, what, eight, nine months ago, that he was going to go out of out of the simple public equity markets and become much more of a He's doubling investor. down. He already owns, according to the latest filing, charter shares. And, um, and now he'll write. He'll own charter shares through this convoluted vehicle of Liberty Broadband that John Malone has structured. I mean, it, if you want liquidity, deals. right, invest in charter. That's stock right. trades. Yep. If you don't need liquidity, maybe Liberty Broadband is a better vehicle. It's the holding company now for all of Malone's cable television assets. Right. That stock trades Doesn't, too, of course. Not as but much, right? It right. hasn't traded it's, yet today. It's for much example. thinly, more thinly today. traded, exactly. Right. And this is something that Malone has historically done over the years is really create either tracking stocks or just put assets in different vehicles so investors can invest only in what they want. He, However, it's all tax driven. Does he ever get anything wrong? Malone, he yeah. got this wrong. He stumbled into this deal, well, honestly. I mean, they, they, they really messed this up, on, uh, candidly, Charter did. Back in, 20 of, uh, in January of 2014, when they put out an offer of 132.50, Time Warner Cable said they wanted 160. 
Charter didn't meet, meet it, and Comcast went over the top and bought the whole thing. Now Charter's paying $195 a share ah, yep. instead of $160. That's a they could have got it in January of 2014. Yep. So now, granted, Charter stock has also gone up quite a mm -hmm. bit since then. So that sort of makes the value. But 100 a bucks in cash important. is still 100 bucks in cash. And it right? could go That's all the way up to 115 this offer. This offer. Yes. So, so yeah, I, I mean, he stumbled into this what? deal. The, the cash the of this, right? yeah. the shareholders have an option to accept either $100 and more Charter stock or all the way up to $115 and less Charter stock, depending on what they want. An interesting tidbit to this deal. Wow. Extraordinary. Great story. Yep.